You're coming to Barcelona and you're planning to explore the magical historic Gothic Quarter and I don't blame you. This is the most wonderful historic neighborhoods in the world and you need to explore it. But it's challenging because it's labyrinthine, it's full of tourists and it's really hard to get a real sense of the place in a way. So I'm going to take you to some of the core key places that you have to visit in this neighborhood. I'm going to tell you some of the mysteries, some of the secrets and I'm even going to tell you the mysterious thing behind this famous, famous bridge right behind me. So venga, let's go. Hey Spain lovers, my name's James Blick and this is Spain Revealed, a channel all about helping you explore Spain like a local. Now I remember the first time I explored the Gothic Quarter and I had no idea where I was. It's so labyrinthine and confusing. But when I started designing our tapas taverns and history tour here in Barcelona, I learned so much about it. I researched really deep and discovered that it has so many hidden secrets and things that reveal about the history of Barcelona. So today I want to start with the beginning, with Roman Barcelona, right way back, and take you through 2,000 years of history by showing you some really key areas and some hidden areas that you might not find on your own. These are all places that we feature on our Tapas Taverns and History Tour, but I thought I'd give you a real insight of, of what we see on that tour. Of course, on that tour we also go and eat amazing tapas, so there's a whole lot more. So follow me and we'll discover the secrets of the Gothic Quarter. Let's go. So I thought it might be interesting to divide this little walk through the Gothic Quarter into, into centuries and sections. And we're going to start with the very beginning of Barcelona, which is Barcelona was founded by the Romans. And a lot of people don't know that. And it was called Barquino. It was founded as a place for pretty much retired Roman soldiers to come and sit up and have a little piece of land after they'd been fighting in the walls around the empire. So it began as that about 2,000 years ago. And there's something here just at the beginning before we enter the Gothic Quarter, which is an indication of that which if you don't know to look for you might miss it. Let me show it to you now. So you'll see these letters behind me spelling Barquino. The C is pronounced K and that was the name of Roman Barcelona when it was first founded. And here is the entry into Roman Barcelona. So effectively the Gothic Quarter, this now wonderful collection of 13th to 15th century buildings is based on the plan of what was the Roman settlement here. And if you didn't know what these letters were you'd think Barcino, what the hell's that? But that's what it is as we walk in leading us into the gate of Roman Barcelona. Barcelona. Let's enter the old city. So as we walk into Roman Barcelona, into the Gothic Quarter, you'll see the sign up here which says Muralla Romana. And so that means the Roman Wall. So this piece right here is a piece of the Roman Wall, which I want to reach out and touch. I'll probably fall over if I do, but I, I just love feeling the history. And, and this part of Barcelona, this Gothic Quarter, is full of so many mysteries and so much magic. And I want to reveal one to you now. Follow me. So while not much really remains of the Roman city, although in the History Museum here in the Gothic Quarter, you can see uh, remains that are underground of the Roman city there is something it's hidden around a few corners that is pretty remarkable and it's on Paradise Street to give you any sort of indication and this is a street that back in uh, Roman times was actually the highest point of the Roman settlement only a, a 15 or 16 meters above sea level but I'll show you what this is something very divine shall we say So this place is something that blows people's minds in our Tapas Taverns and History Tour when we walk in here. This is the remains of a first century Roman temple that was right in the Forum here in Barcelona and is the oldest thing above ground that still exists in Barcelona and a building has been built around it. So there's people who live in this building and, and you know they'll be cooking their lunch or, or you know whatever getting ready for work and they have Roman columns right outside their window which is pretty incredible. So we're now behind the cathedral and I love looking up there's a few kind of secret little things here you'll see instead of gargoyles in a couple of the places and one they have a unicorn and another they have an elephant and these are almost like magical mystical creatures to people at the time when this piece being built in the middle ages you know elephants obviously know they existed but but they were not something you saw every day and unicorns well those didn't exist what I love about the gothic quarter is those little hidden items that if you don't know to look for them you'll just miss them and another little hidden symbol that you want to check out up here is this image of this man with a shield and a sword and very hairy body. Uh, he's called Wilfred the Hairy and literally they say he was so hairy he did not have to wear armor. Now he is considered the father of Catalonia so he lived in the 9th century and so Wilfred the Hairy was the first man who united what we now consider Catalonia and he's remembered as such an important person in the history of this region and you'll see him here with his hairy body fighting what looks like a dragon. 
So Wilfred the Hairy chose Barcelona as effectively his capital, his principal city, and that was the 9th century and right up to the 15th century Barcelona became the center of this massive Mediterranean trade empire. There's a building here which is beautiful to enter which is called the Archives of the Crown of Aragon and that's where all the records are kept from the 9th century right up through that massive incredible empire and this was the time when the Gothic Quarter was built up and why we have this wonderful magical Gothic Quarter here with building from the 13th to the 15th century when the city was just the center almost of the world in a, in a lot of ways. So just alongside the archives of the Crown of Aragon, you can see the Plaza de Rey. This is a great square with a great story behind it that may or may not be true, but reflects a really important moment in history. So we have what was the palace that the Counts of Barcelona lived in when, you know, there was this great trading empire. And you see these steps leading up. So one of the stories goes, and it may be true, when Columbus got back from his first voyage in 1493, he was welcomed back here by Ferdinand and Isabel. And of course, that was such a dream dramatic moment in so many ways for world history, Spanish history, and I think it's really interesting to reflect on a few of the, the impacts of that. I mean, one, obviously all these foodstuffs came into Spain and thereby Europe because of the contact with the New World. Before that, the people in Europe didn't have potatoes, tomatoes, you say potato, I say tomato, chocolate, tobacco, corn, none of that stuff existed. You think, like, what were they eating? So, you know, we've started with Rome, Rome and Barcelona, and we got to the 15th century now, only 500 years ago, for the first 15th Fifteen of those centuries they weren't eating any of those things it's pretty surreal so obviously that had a huge impact on the diet and changed so many things that are famous about Spanish cuisine now and just in the corner of this square is this sort of small house which is known as the hangman's house or, or perhaps once was the hangman's house I don't know if it's true or not although I have written a few places that it was true that nobody wanted to have the hangman or the executioner as their neighbor and so they put him here in this house that has no neighbors or had no neighbors it's now part of the, the Barcelona History Museum but it was built into the Roman wall and it was just the place where he had no neighbors because nobody wants to live next to that guy. Feel a bit sorry for him. I guess he was just doing his job, but hell of a profession to choose. Another thing in the Gothic Quarter that's not quite as it seems is the Bisbe Bridge. This is probably or definitely the most photographed thing in the Gothic Quarter, this beautiful bridge that looks like it's hundreds of years old, but it's not. It's not even a hundred years old. So in the 1920s, there was an architect who proposed to the local government to kind of redevelop the Gothic area and, and again, give it a bit more oomph, tidy it up, and he was turned down but one thing he was allowed to do was build this causeway or, or passage that leads from one government building to another so it was built in 1928 and as I say not even a hundred years old 89 years old I think when you look at it you think it must be 500 years old so go figure and there's a little secret underneath I want to show you that's connected to the architect So under the bridge there's a skull with a dagger pierced right through it nobody quite knows why it's there. One of the legends is that if the dagger is pulled out then Barcelona will crumble. But what another story says is the architect who was annoyed that he couldn't get his whole redevelopment plan for the Gothic approved and could only get this bridge decided to put a little kind of negative almost curse on those who didn't go along with his plan and that is what that skull there signifies. So I don't know if it's true they also say that if you walk under the bridge backwards while looking at the skull and make a wish your wish will come true. So come on Yoli. Yeah. And so another little piece of artistic license that was done in the late 19th century to give the Gothic Quarter that little bit extra oomph was this piece of Roman aqueduct, almost like an installed Roman aqueduct ruin. Now the Roman aqueduct did run through here I believe, but in the late 19th century they decided to add this piece on to make it look all a little more ancient, old and, and magical. So I mean people, and I mean when I first came I saw it, it's like wow there's even a remains of Roman aqueduct running into what was the Roman city, but that was put in. I mean a long time ago, or a hundred years ago, but it was put in. And so while you're doing a historic walk, if you want to take a little break and have a vermouth, then I think Bartlett B is a great little stop. This place has been open since the 20s, and it still has that kind of old world vibe. And it opened in the 1920s, and from the mid-20s to the mid-30s, they were open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. That gives you a sense of what the bohemian kind of life of Barcelona was like during that pre-Civil War period. This is when Picasso was about, and everything like that. And then so what happened is in 1936, obviously the Spanish Civil War, 
war broke out and they tried to pull down the kind of the shutters to close up to, to protect themselves and because it had been open for 10 years they couldn't close the damn thing and so they just left it open and they kept open right through and now still going it's in the fourth generation of this family I've got down behind you can see Roger Hola Roger que tal? <laughs> fourth generation still working in this bar and I think that's wonderful so as I say if you need a little refresher mid historic walk in the Plaza del P with the beautiful church right there just a nice really spot to hang out and drink vermouth salute So right here in the heart of the Gothic Quarter, there's a maze of very narrow, wonderful little streets that from the 9th to the 14th century was the thriving Jewish neighborhood. This was where there was a Jewish community of up to around 4,000 people, they believe, what's called the Kai, C-A-L-L. -L. And here in this particular street, a tombstone from the 9th century was found. So to give you an indication of the Jewish community that was here, and we also have right behind me what was once the synagogue. So it's now been reclaimed and restored and so there's not much to see to be honest but it's just a wonderful little area to walk around and to remember that the Jewish people had a community here until they were persecuted you know particularly in the late 1300s and then through the Inquisition beyond that and then finally expelled from Spain so I really suggest you visit this part of the Gothic Quarter. So we're here in a square called San Filipe Neri, and I love this peaceful square. It really reminds you of the tragedy that has been Spain's 20th century in terms of civil war and then dictatorship. So in 1936, civil war broke out all over Spain. It lasted for three years, and of course, there was it's a horrible tragedy for this country. And this is one of the reminders of that tragedy. So Franco, the general who staged a coup to take over the country and became the dictator until the mid-70s, in 1938, his ally Mussolini the Italian dictator who was who was helping Franco win the war Mussolini dropped a bomb on the square and killed 42 people including children because there's a school here and children were playing and all these marks behind me are shrapnel marks from that bomb that blew up and they were decided to be kept like that not repaired as a reminder of the tragedy of the Civil War and the children still play here so when you come to the square sometimes it's closed off because this beautiful square is literally the playground for the school that's here. It's mind-boggling. I grew up playing in, in fields in New Zealand, but to think that this could have been the place where I played football, I mean, I can't even conceive it, but it, it's wonderful to see and it's wonderful that it's still used for that and it still has so much life. So guys, here we are in the Plaza San Jaume. This huge, expansive square has been the administrative center of this city for 2,000 years. Right on the spot is where the Roman Forum was and the Roman Temple, remember those columns we saw, was also in this forum. So right back then, this was the focus of everything and now it has the two most important administrative buildings in the city we have the Catalunya Parliament on one side and on the other side we have the Barcelona Town Hall opposing each other and this is the perfect spot to decode something that for so many people when they visit Barcelona is a total mystery and very confusing all these flags you see all over the city come with me so there's a variety of different flags you're going to see all over Barcelona and let me help you understand what they are. So right behind me on the town hall of Barcelona you see three. The one on the left is the flag of Catalonia with the four stripes. Where does that come from? Well remember Wilfred the Hairy, that really hairy guy? Supposedly when he was dying he dipped his own fingers in his blood or someone else dipped their fingers in his blood and scraped four blood-stained fingers down his shield. Hence the flag of Catalonia and he's the father of Catalonia. So that's the flag you're going to see. In the middle it's the Spanish flag. Now by law that flag has to be higher than the regional flag, that's why it's slightly higher. And to the, the next one on the right, that's the flag of Barcelona, the city. But those are the official flags. There's an unofficial flag as well. Swing it over here, Yoli. And behind me, this is up in that top corner of that building. That is not an official building, that is someone's home. And you're gonna see that flag all over the place. And that is the independence flag. Now you will have heard that there's a movement in Catalonia to separate from Spain. So you may know that there's a very charged political atmosphere in, in Catalonia and Barcelona right now because there is a percentage of the population that wanna separate from Spain. And there's another symbol you're gonna see around Barcelona 
that and that is right next to that flag and that is the yellow ribbon particularly going to see that the moment when we're filming this in June 2019 now because of the independence movement in Barcelona some Catalan politicians have been put in prison by the Spanish government and now what that yellow ribbon represents is people saying that they want those people taken out of prison they're calling them political prisoners so that represents that that kind of cry to say get these people out of prison now obviously it depends on which side you're on whether you think they're political prisoners or not but that gives you an understanding and context of what that yellow ribbon means that you're going to see around this and as we swing up here you'll see the yellow ribbon and it says free political prisoners and exile so that's what that represents is the Generalitat which is the Parliament of Catalonia are saying we think these people are political prisoners and get them out of prison now if you ask the central government they will have a different opinion and call them criminals so obviously it's super complicated but that will help you get an understanding of these symbols you're going to see all over the city right now So if we entered the Gothic Quarter through what was originally the North Gate, we've walked through the Gothic Quarter and we're exiting through what was the Sea Gate back in Roman Barquino. So literally you walk down the street in the middle of the Gothic and get to a point where it says Porta de Mar and that means the Sea Gate. And so this 2,000 years ago was effectively where you exited Roman Barcelona to go out to the Mediterranean which was just behind me. Over the years that the land has extended, it's been reclaimed, but right here we were at the Sea Gate. And so I find it fascinating and incredible how small this place was was when it was Roman Barcelona and how small the Gothic Quarter is. It feels big because it's so easy to get lost in it, but there's so much magic in here. There are also public thermal Roman baths in here. So guys, if we keep heading that way, we'll hit La Barceloneta. That's where the seashore is these days in the 21st century. And Yoli and I are heading there now for tapas after exploring this, this area. And guys, you do need to explore the Gothic Quarter in Barcelona. It's beautiful. And if you want to do it with us with Devour Tours, you can join our Tapas Tamarins and History Tour. You'll explore all these spots. You'll get extra information. And you will also get delicious tapas throughout this neighborhood. Check the link below. I'll link to that tour. I hope you'll join us. And either way, I hope you explore this amazing part of Barcelona. We'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego. Ciao.